So good morning and welcome to the session Einstein Platform Best Practices. My name is René Winkelmeier and I will be your host for your next 20 minutes. I work for Salesforce. You, you may have seen this slide, our usual forward-looking statement. So whatever you see, because some of this is beta at the moment, make your purchasing decision based on what is currently available. What you will learn in this session is best practices. It's all about the right amount of data when you work with AI. You will learn some tweaks around models and trainings. And third, not hot dog. Who knows Silicon Valley? OK, gotcha. So before we start, a quick overview about both services that are available. First, we have vision. Everything that we we'll provide around image classification and object detection. The second is language, which is text intent and text sentiment. Who has some experience with those services yet? Can you raise your hand? OK. Two people in the best practice session. That's great. Awesome. <laughs> So for those who are not familiar with those services, with image classification, we have a service offering that enables you to classify and to categorize images. Basically, if you feed the machine, if you feed the Einstein platform with a set of examples, let's say bananas and oranges, image classification can automatically detect new images that it hasn't seen before if it falls into one of those two categories. The other service offering object detection is around detecting objects within an image, which means you have to specify which objects it should detect before. Text in language sentiment and language intent are around detecting text or utterances of a text within a given string. Let's say you have something like, where, I where is my order? Or what is my order status? So you would feed Einstein Platform with those examples and applying machine learning, Einstein Platform can then detect similar patterns. And then based on that, you can classify that text, for example, as order status and route that to a specific service team, for example. And sentiment gives you the answer, is it a good, unusual, or a negative text? So what do you see here? Banana, anyone? Raise your hands. Do you see a banana? Who is disagreeing that they see a banana on here? One person. So th this could be also a shelf, or it could be a bowl of fruit, right? So you tell the machine what it sees in this picture. And I always rely to this, you know, I have three kids under five. I know it's busy, but I have to explain them every day. This is a banana. This is a table. This is A, B, and C. And based on that, my kids apply the pattern. And this is just not different, right? You feed Einstein Platform with examples, it automatically detects the pattern. So when it comes to Einstein Platform, one banana is not enough, right? So you would have to add more data, multiple different examples. So bring it for example for a real world scenario, which I discussed at the beginning of this year with a customer in Amsterdam. Um, they are checking those voltage counters in, in houses. I don't know. I'm German, so I don't know the English word for that. So volunteers go from house to house and check that. And they are also responsible for checking the conditions of the cables. Good condition, average condition, or bad condition needs to be replaced. But because they are volunteers, they're not really well trained in that. So the company took a thousand pictures of very different good, average, and bad cables. And now the volunteers just take a picture and they get a pattern back, hey, good or bad, and automatically get a replacement for that. So it depends on the amount of data that you feed into the machine. 
is this the right amount of data? We can't say. And you will see later in an example that I have very good results with only 15 images. But depending on your use case and on the variances that could be on the products, an example for vision that you want to classify, you need many, many more images. Some customers have a thousand images of a specific product. The important thing to note here, those are the same images, so it won't be able to train, right? And this is the first thing to understand is the, uh, the amount of data is also as important as the variation of data. Like if you want to use a uh, vision to classify an object or detection to detect an object, you need to have pictures from multiple angles, for example. Just not, you know, 50 just in front. And you will see a very interesting example a, a bit later. So the next thing you should understand is when you work with Einstein platform services, and that relies to every AI that which you can feed is, it is about training the machine, giving feedback, and then retrain. So what does that mean? I'll give you a good example. And we had some of you are hopefully developers, so you want to see some real working application. So here's a playground. This is an open source project which you can just you know, install in any Scratch Org de developer edition or even in your production org. And I've given you an example for image classification. And Einstein Platform has a couple of pre built models, right, where you can just you know, throw an image in and see what happens. And here we have a food image classifier. So the team took you know, thousands of pictures from Getty and trained it with different food images. So I'm going to upload a file. And I have a banana here, right? So my example. So what's happening now is I'm getting a response back, a prediction. So you can see here, 86% probability that this is a banana. It's good, right? It's good. In case, and this is why I say train, feedback retrain, is maybe 86% is not sufficient for your use case because you want to have 95% certainty because Einstein Platform will automate your processes, right? No one should look later and decide is it OK? No, you want to have an automated decision based on this. So what you can do and what you should do is then take, for example, this picture, add it to the data, and then retrain the model. So basically, you give the set of 500 images, you get this output for banana, and said, yeah, well, I had 500 banana images, but still only 86% for this. So we need to add this example to my data set and then retrain. This is really important because it is an ongoing process. It is an ongoing process. I have the subtle here, less models. For those who are hopefully a bit familiar with Einstein Platform is when you have a data set with all your different categories in there and you train it, the output is a so-called model. And this model is then used to predict your image or your text against it. In the past, people tended to create always a new model, right? Always a new model. It gives a new model ID, which is very hard to maintain in your applications. Like you have when you use it in Process Builder or in your Java application, you have always to change that. Um, Einstein Platform offers a service when you retrain a data set you can persist the model ID, which basically just enhances your existing model. And this is really important. I see it often in the wild that people create a new model, and I just say, no, take that model and retrain it with the examples. Another thing to note is when you upload data to Einstein platform, an example, 1,000 images, 90% of those images are used for the training, and 10% are used for testing the training. 
right? So we are automatically testing the training. So here are the 900. Let's take 100 of those images and test how good the prediction is. You can then later get this test prediction result and see how good it is, right, before you start in production with it. Really important. We call it a train split ratio. So this, is a so this is also the parameter name that you will find in the official documentation if you think that you want to tweak the ratio. If you say, no, I want to train my models with 950 images and only do take 50 images for testing, that's fine. Usually, I would say 90% are OK, but fine tune it to see how, what kind of results you will get. Use feedback in training. I mentioned before that the best approach is to have your data set, feedback it, and retrain it. So what you can do is, and this is an optional parameter, which is not on default true, is that you can use your feedback trainer in new data, uh, in new training, right? It is sadly at the moment not default. So whenever you do a retraining, make sure you have the with feedback parameter set. And my biggest friend is not hot dog. So not hot dog. <laughs> For those who know Silicon Valley, the series have likely seen that with a pizza and image detection, maybe. So when you have, and this is, I think, one of the most important parts. So when I have my, my classification here, and I have my pre-built food image classifier. Let's do something else. And I have here a model which is trained to detect mountains and beaches, a standard image that you can just take from the Einstein AI website, which is trained to classify mountains and beaches, those two categories. So I'm going to run a prediction against that. And let's take, let's take, I take a Bengal cat. So I'm running a picture against it, which the model does not know, because it has been just trained to understand mountains and beaches. Still, it gives me 66% certainty that this is a mountain, because it has only been trained to detect those two patterns. So when, we say, when I say not hot dog, it's basically when you work for with image recognition, you have to also, or you should have a negative label, like feed 1,000, 2,000 images of something else into the machine. Because, that, because if you want to rely if it's 66% 60, 60, 60 a mountain or 99% something else. Right, just to get it higher in the rank. So to have a negative label, this is really important when you work with vision um, in Einstein platform. So negative label. We offer a parameter for that with global data set ID. What does it mean? We have a couple of global data sets, like the food image classifier, like uh, a multi-scene um, uh, data set that you can just add automatically to your data set. So if you train your own custom data with your five categories, you can make it happen that you can add our data sets as the negative category for not hot dog. Metrics are also really important. I mentioned before, testing with 10% and using 90% of your images as data, right? So we are giving you back the parameters for test accuracy and training accuracy. What does it mean? When you train a model, you have the option to fetch its metrics. And we give you the data back on test accuracy how good was the testing with those 10% of images and how good was the training with those 90% of images. So as you saw, my 66% probability for my, um, for my cat as a mountain, this is basically the same probability value that you can get back. So when you train a model 
And you see, okay, but those 10% of images just give me 85% certainty based on those 10% of data sets. You already ha know that you have to retrain your model to get a higher accuracy on that. Questions? Hang on. Thank you. So the question is, if, we would if you would use a negative example, a negative label, the not hot dog, what would, it, what would it give back, right? So when you run a prediction, you're getting back a list of probabilities. So in, in this example, there are two categories classified, mountains and beaches. If you would have your negative label in there, like something else, it would show up as a third label in here. So, so, you will, so if it detects something else as other, for example, it will give you either 98% back for other. Could also be, in this example, if I would feed a real mountain, zero. Right? Just because it knows it's already another label in this model. Th that's why it's really important to have this negative label to reduce the number of false positives in, in real-world detections. Another question. So the question is, this playground, is it available in production? Yes. Um, it's an open source project that we from Salesforce developers promote. So you can just go to this bit.ly, take, hang on, take a picture of that. It's on GitHub. You can deploy it to any org. It, uh, it includes Apex wrappers for all all APIs that Einstein Platform offers, from language, vision, all models, error handling, authentication, everything in there. You get set up in five minutes. And soon to be also process builder integration for our beloved admins. Any more questions? Just pick me otherwise here at the conference. I should be around here till Thursday. Thank you very much.